What's going on guys? So today we're gonna be trying to make some sort of mount to uh, bolt our shifter down in the van. So what I'm thinking about doing is making some sort of like aluminum box and just kind of bending it and uh, bolting this to the top and then just like cutting a hole for uh, this piece right here so it can sit in there. I don't know, just figure something out, but I do need to get this sitting like six inches up because when it's on the floor, it's way too low. And uh, yeah, we need it about right here. So I think it would be good to uh, make it out of like aluminum or something, maybe steel, but aluminum is pretty soft and easy to bend. And I've seen a couple other ways people have done it online. And I think I'm just gonna do that, just make it out of aluminum. So uh, we're gonna run over to PFI real quick, see if Brent has anything, he probably will, and see if we can't get this thing mounted in the van today. So we're over at PFI right now and I brought the shifter assembly from the van and uh, we were looking for some sheets of aluminum and Brent happened to have some. So we're gonna be using this one right here and we already cut it to size. We used his sheet metal shear over there and got it cut to the size we want. And now what we're gonna do is put some bends in this thing. I already have everything measured out. We're gonna be putting a 90 degree bend on this line right here and on this line and then also on these two lines right here. This middle line is just to uh, mark where the middle of the piece was. But this middle section is gonna be six inches wide and that is going to be sitting on the bottom or the floor of the van. And then the shifter will be kind of above that. And then it'll have a 90 degree bend up right here. And then this section right here is another six inches. And that's going to bring the shifter six inches up on each side. And then this last two inches right here will be bent over. And then we'll be able to use that to uh, mount the shifter to the whole thing. So that's what we're gonna do. And now we just gotta get it bent. No, flip that side. Oh yeah, we're good. <laughs> Wowza. Wow. What for? Shifter. Did it work? The van. Yeah, I'll just close enough. I'll yeah. Just yeah. close it up. Man, I thought like you were making a super cool big ass intake. So. Oh, I'm gonna bend. We need the dad bot on here. <laughs> Oh, still needs more. I think we're just gonna bend it. Yeah, it's not doing anything. your holes a little. Yeah, this this side's perfect. Yeah. So if you could find something to like put in there that's strong, just hammer this down. You need to put it under this wheel and lower the lift. <laughs> All right. All right, so we just got back from PFI and we weren't able to uh, get this all the way bent straight. So it still has like this slight angle to it. So uh, right now we're gonna try to cut out some aluminum strips and we're just gonna hold this together where it needs to be. And then I'm just gonna weld two strips on each side just to hold it straight. And then we'll be able to uh, put the shifter on there and start bolting things from there. We tried to cut this piece of aluminum that we got already with this little shear right here, but that didn't work. So we're gonna use the Sawzall. And our cuts might be a little crooked, but it's all right. So we got the tabs welded on, and it's looking a lot straighter now. These uh, two top pieces are still angled up just a little bit, but that's all right. That will all tighten down once we get it on there. And uh, now I have to cut uh, two notches out on both sides right here so that it can clear uh, this guy right there and then this part over here because we need this to sit flat on there like so. And as you can see, it hits right underneath right there. Actually, it's kind of hard to see, but it does hit right there. So we have to notch it a little bit so the shifter will sit flat and then we'll be able to drill our holes and mount the uh, shifter assembly to this aluminum box right here and then we'll be able to put the whole thing in the van and then we're gonna have to drill some holes through this and through the floor of the van and then get everything bolted down and then it should be ready to go 
So I'm gonna get to cutting these two notches out real quick and then we'll see about trying to get uh, this part bolted to this aluminum box right here that we just made. Watch your hand. Shifter fits good now with the notches cut out. So now I'm just going to uh, round these corners off real quick because those are pretty sharp and then we'll get to drilling the holes. All right, so we got the holes drilled and right now we just have two bolts holding it down. These are supposed to have washers under them, but we'll put those on later since we have to take it off soon anyways when we go to drill the holes through the floor. But uh, one issue that we're like kind of running into is uh, early on, uh, there's like this plastic piece right here that we noticed. This is for like, I think this goes to the back seats, like runs the heater and AC to the back seats. But uh, I think it runs right through here and then it shoots over to the right. You can kind of see the floor is like lumpy right here. And I wanted to try to keep this in here if we could, but it might be in the way. And uh, I think we're gonna cut a hole in the carpet right here just to kind of take a look at what's underneath it. We really don't need this, but it would be nice if we could keep it. But if we have to take it out to get this mounted, uh, that's not an issue with me either. But it would be nice to keep as many things on here as we could and keep it as original as we could. But uh, yeah, we're gonna cut a hole in the carpet real quick right here since we're gonna cover that up anyways, just so we can take a look at what's underneath it. All right, so we cut a hole in the carpet and we really couldn't find much. There's just like metal under there and some sound detonating. And uh, we're just gonna drill right through it. And hopefully we don't hit anything important. Uh, if we do happen to go through this vent, uh, as long as there's a bolt through it and we don't like clamp it down too tight and it doesn't crush anything under there, I don't see any reason why that still won't work. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna drill through it, see what happens and just bolt it down. Cause uh, we need to get this thing going. I think we're all the way through. Or something. I think it might be hitting on the heat shield. All right, so here is our drill bit. It's still in the drill, and we just left it dangling in there. But as you can see, it's hitting on this heat shield right here, which is not an issue, and we did get lucky. So what I was talking about before, I meant to say like supports, like this piece right here, how it gets uh, thicker right here. I was worried that we were gonna have to drill all the way through this, which still wouldn't be a big deal, but it uh, looks like we'll be able to work past this. But, uh, Looks like we'll be okay with the heat shield as well. Uh, all we're gonna have to do is just, you know, reach in there to get the nut on because right now we drilled the front left uh, screw. So there's gonna be another one down in here a little farther. And then we're going to uh, do two more back here. So we measured from this one eight and a half inches back. The plate that we have is big enough, you know, to support that. So we're gonna have two more, one right here and then another one uh, under the heat shield right there, but luckily this heat shield gives us enough room to get our fingers in there And we'll just be able to run bolts through there and get it all tightened down But uh, like I said, we got lucky because we didn't hit anything none of the venting or nothing like that All it was was this one piece of sheet metal right here all that vent stuff uh, Turned to the right right here right before where we drilled so we got pretty lucky with that Didn't drill through anything important at all and uh, yeah, so we'll get our other holes drilled then we'll get some bolts and nuts and get everything bolted down and the shifter should be ready to go. So yeah, we got kind of lucky with that, but it should all work out. Okay, so change of plans. We did get another hole drilled and it does line up, but this carpet is a pain with the insulation under it. It keeps like snagging on the drill. So we're just gonna cut a spot out in the carpet and then we won't have to deal with it. And then it's also way easier to line up the hole because I don't know if you guys can see right here, but that's where one of the holes is at, and uh, you pretty much have to feel for it. So, gotta feel for that hole or else you would not know it's there. But yeah, so we're just gonna rip all this out and make it a lot easier without the carpet right here. You're ready for a horrible noise. <laughs> I don't know how this drill still works. And yes, I had the drill in reverse on purpose right there. It's the only way to drill. Yeah, it's the only way, <laughs> unless it just snags up. See, and then right when you put it in reverse, watch it work. That's how you do it. Yeah. Ready to 
go. Oh shit. It's like stock uh, Civic hike, honestly. Dude, it, it's solid. That's not going anywhere. We only have two bolts in the piece right here and on this. It's not even tight yet. So they won't go into reverse. So we need to like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Shit. We didn't even notice that. It's all right. I think it fits. Okay, that's a tight fit. I didn't even realize that the e-brake was right there. Who needs e-brakes when you're going fast? That sucks. I wanted to drift it. Well, now, now it's in like an awkward spot. Now it's time for the hydro e-brake. I guess we just put a hydro like right here. A big ass one like sideways right here. Oh well, at least the e-brake clears. We didn't completely fail. If not, we would have had to like cut. Yeah, that would have sucked. <laughs> that would have sucked. All right, so we got the shifter bolted down just with two bolts right now, but it seems pretty solid. And right now we're just getting the oil drained. This is still the first batch of oil that was in the motor. So it's getting its first oil change right now since uh, we did let it fully warm up and I'm just gonna drain it and we're gonna throw some more cheap break-in oil, but this time we're gonna put about 50 miles on it and then that's when we will actually put uh, a better brand of oil in here. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna let this oil drain out right now and get a new oil filter on there, put some more oil in it and I think she's ready to uh, go around the block again and try out the new shifter. Uh, once again, we still don't have the alternator, so we're just going off the battery. It is fully charged, so we should be all right. Oh yeah, that, that looks really good. So we just cut open the oil filter just to look at it. Here, I'll try to spread it out some. Yeah, there's some in there. Yeah, there's some tiny little flakes, which is completely normal since we're just breaking it in. It's the first startup ever. Yeah. That's like hardly any, that's fine. Dude, my wagon, for like the first couple months before it finally spun a bearing, you would cut o open the oil filter and you yeah. pour it out, it was like so much. Like, like big crazy. chunks? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this isn't gonna last very long. Yeah, but yeah no, that's fine right there. We just got the oil right here. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. We did this in the past, yeah. It's like all the dust from the piston ring sitting, or seating, I mean. Looks all sparkly. Ready to go. I also cut off this weird angle from the upper radiator hose. Looks way better now, and the coolant should be able to flow better, because I was actually having issues yesterday when I was trying to fill it up, because I forgot how this went but it was like angled up, like wherever this bump was, was higher than the level of the radiator cap right there, so it wouldn't like fully fill up, but now that the hose is lower than the height of the radiator cap, it should have no issue filling all the way up. So uh, yeah, just gotta top it off and we're gonna take her around the block. Got the manual minivan. <laughs> oh yeah. It's so sick. we put that on so we could drive it. Yeah. Or else it'd be just ear rape inside of here. back in the van didn't get stranded even though the battery was starting to die again but anyways the shifter works great 
goes into every gear perfect. Uh, we definitely need to get an alternator on here, then we'll actually be able to drive it wherever. But it seems like it's running good. It's a little rough uh, from a stop and go. The idle needs a little tweaking, but uh, I'm sure that's nothing that uh, a good tune can't fix. But uh, yeah, also need to figure out the power steering. That's just been sitting there this whole time as well. We need to get the oil pressure gauge ran inside. And I really just want to put some miles on this thing, get it nice and broken, and she'll be ready to uh, take some boost here pretty soon. So that's going to be it for tonight, guys, and I hope you enjoyed.